and welcome back. This break is fully dedicated to the Legal Forum. This forum focuses on the legal side of the protection of the freedom of expression. One of the partners in this Legal Forum is UNESCO and with me from UNESCO is Mr. Guillermo Canella. Welcome Mr. Canella. So what is the Legal Forum all about? As you said, uh, one important aspect of the protection of freedom of expression uh, is the role of what we call judicial operators, judges, prosecutors, law enforcement agencies, agents in protecting freedom of expression, access to information and safety of journalists. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest issues in terms of safety of journalists around the world is the impunity uh, related to the crimes against journalists. So uh, out of the 10, uh, 10 murders of journalists, only one is actually prosecuted until the end of the judicial process. Mm -hmm. But to fight this impunity that is feeding back the cycle of violence, we need prosecutors who prosecute the crimes, we need judges who can take uh, decisions based on international human rights law and human rights standards. So this forum was actually a gathering to hear to them, mm -hmm. judges, prosecutors, uh, institutions in charge of training judge judges and prosecutors, he regional human rights courts, mm -hmm. on how we can support them uh, to improve this global work of protecting freedom of expression. And how can UNESCO contribute to that? UNESCO is actually uh, uh, developing from seven years now what we call our Judges Initiative, uh, which has already engaged 17,000 judges from more than 60 wow. countries in this discussion on how to protect freedom of expression. So the good news, we have bad news, the sense that we do still have impunity, etc. But the good news is that judges and prosecutors are very much interested in this issue. So how we can uh, engage them in this discussion and obviously they need to keep their independence. So this is, uh, UNESCO has this big initiative doing uh, uh, supporting national training institutions of judges on how to improve these. We have online courses for, for judges and prosecutors, etc. This is one. Yes. But Two, sorry to just to say, because this is very important to the partners here. Yes. With the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands, the Asser Institute and Free Press Unlimited, UNESCO has also partner, partnered to organize this legal forum. And this yes. is very important. So how we, we get all these people together to say what, what we do next uh, uh, to, to, to actually tackle this problem. And yes, and, and you also re uh, mentioned that the, the Asser Institute is one uh, of the partners. And um, uh, another partner is the Asser Institute, uh, a research center for international and European law. And last week I spoke to the chair of the board, Jana Nijman, about how the Asser Institute can contribute to help legal actors defend journalists better in court. Uh, Professor Nijman, thank you for having us here at the Asser Institute. What is it exactly that you do here? Yeah, a warm welcome to you here <laughs> at the Asser Institute. So this is a research institute. Um, we research all kinds of fields of international and European law. But we also want to make sure that the research reaches society. And we make sure to have a lot of people come to this place, to this institute. From all over the world. From all over the world. Um, we meet a lot of young people working here at the international organizations and the courts and tribunals. The, the institute is based in the international quarter uh, around the World Forum. So uh, a lot of young international lawyers come to our um, events and, and to learn and discuss international law. So a very, very much a place where knowledge is discussed, generated and, and shared. And why did the Asser Institute get involved with the legal forum? We got involved really because of uh, the importance of human rights and the importance of the freedom of expression. And you need the judiciary, you need legal actors to protect uh, uh, these freedoms, to protect journalists. Yes, there are all kinds of international and regional legal instruments. Hey, you have the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, you have the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, all guarantee freedom of expression, free speech. But these are rather abstract norms 
And you need courts, judges, who then make sure that these rights are protected, that these journalists are protected. Free speech, yeah, what is speech? Is a tweet a speech act? Uh, so, so defamation, what is defamation? What is incitement to hate? So it's all nicely uh, put in, in these legal instruments, but then you need courts, judges, prosecutors who make it concrete and make sure that these legal instruments are interpreted and are applied. So the Asser Institute has a long tradition in um, pre providing trainings on this uh, topic. So what are your hopes and dreams for the future? Dream definitely is that this is not no longer necessary, that journalists can do their work safely, are not uh, violated, are not working under violence, uh, violent conditions. One hopes that there is a world without this possible. Also here today uh, to welcome the legal uh, participants of the legal forum is the mayor of The Hague, but unfortunately he could not make it to our studio. Instead, he made this wonderful video to welcome us to his international city of justice. I would have preferred to be with you in person, to speak to you, and welcome you to The Hague. But fortunately, we can also do this in this way. The Hague is the international city of peace and justice, where we will find around 300 international institutes, organizations and NGOs. The Hague is the second UN city after New York, the only mayor body of the United Nations situated outside of New York is in The Hague the International Court of Justice. Tens of thousands of people here in The Hague are hard at work to create a better world. A world without chemical weapons and ethnic cleansing. A world in which conflicts are fought out, not on the battlefield, but in courtroom. A world governed by the rule of law, rather than the law of the jungle. The presence of all these judicial and international organizations has enabled The Hague to become a leading center of research and expertise. Anyone who wants to deepen their knowledge of international law and international cooperation has to be in The Hague. And naturally, it's also possible to do that online in these corona times. And that's also why it is so good that Despite the limitations, which we all now have to live with, you can still take part in this meeting. Last October, we celebrated the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. The UN adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Its preamble sets out the four freedoms formulated by US President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from want and freedom from fear. In many places all over the world, these freedoms are still threatened. And that's why we must continue to defend them. This meeting is devoted to press freedom. Free speech and a free press are absolutely essential to a free society. As a shelter city, The Hague provides refuge to threatened journalists who can take a respite while they're here. In addition to which, The Hague provides a platform for debate and the exchange of knowledge on topics like press freedom and free speech. I wish you all a most enjoyable and fruitful meeting. And please know that you will always be welcome here. I therefore hope that one day, in even better times, I will be able to welcome you here in The Hague again.
Yes, and the side of UNESCO and the Osser Institute, the third party in organizing the legal forum is Free Press Unlimited, an organization that helps local journalists in conflict areas so they can still provide their audience with independent news and reliable information. With me is Leon Willems from the FPU. Leon, welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, you were one of the participants and it was a session behind closed doors. Why was that? You see... Um, the impunity for crimes against journalists is a very sensitive and highly political issue. And journalists sometimes think that judges, prosecutors, the judicial institutions are not on their side. And in many countries, we work across the world, you see that actually a lot of the judicial institutions actively support government against journalists. So there's that sensitivity. At the same time, judges, prosecutors sometimes do not trust journalists to tell the entire story. There's a lot of uh, potential irritation. But if you care about the struggle for the safety of journalists, we need all the actors around the table to make an impact. So we need the judicial actors. So this is the first of a series of meetings where we try to uh, build trust in order to try to find new ways to protect journalists. And we need judicial actors to take uh, uh, their part. So this is the first of a series of meetings, I hope. Yeah, and I hope that the FPU will also be involved in that in the years to come. We first have a video to show you what the FPU, this organization, is all about. Journalists play a vital role in societies by providing us with reliable information, by exposing societal wrongs, and by holding those in power accountable. But every day, journalists worldwide face harassment, intimidation, imprisonment, and even murder. These attacks are not just attacks on journalists. These are attacks on freedom of expression and democracy, and they send a dangerous signal to society. Last year, 49 journalists were killed, 57 journalists were held hostage, and almost 400 journalists were imprisoned. In just one out of 10 murder cases, an offender was convicted. It's time to end impunity against journalists, to protect our journalists, to protect our freedom of speech, and to protect our democratic principles. That was quite a, a strong clip uh, that's, that also emphasizes the, the need of uh, the legal um, support we can give. So, so what was one of the main things that came out of the forum? I think that one of the most important outcomes is that actually if you work together and if you find a way to use the law to protect journalists, you can make an impact and you can end impunity. Um, of course, not all judges, not all prosecutors know everything about how to use this in the best way. So what we hope to achieve is that this will be a follow-on and that we'll have many more sessions where we can demonstrate how within the rule of law we can find a way to protect journalists better. And, and, and that, is, that is the real hope behind the forum, mm -hmm. so that the next time we can be more open, have more participants, etc. So, you know, this is a difficult year for, yes. for everybody because of yeah, corona. And journalists and legal uh, uh, actors aren't always friends, so... <laughs> We're not always friends, but you see, in the end of the day, we all depend on good and quality information. This is also vital for the judicial sector. Okay, so thank you, Leon, and we will talk about more about the FPU in the next break. Coming up, we have a very special double interview between journalist Carmen Arestegui and Jeanette Bedoya-Lima, this year's winner of the UNESCO Guillermo Cano Prize. See you in a bit.